Hello. Testing. Testing. All good. I'm here. Hi. I'm uh, tempted to whisper. I just got my son to sleep, so I'm hoping things stay quiet. Anyways, hello everybody. Happy New Year. Good to see you. Hope you can hear me all right. Let me know if uh, stream quality is okay, if there's any um, problems. I've got chat over here today. I'm having a glitch with my chat today, unfortunately, so I'm not seeing Twitch chat, um, but I know you guys are there. So uh, I can see YouTube chat, but um, I'm having trouble getting Twitch. So I'll try and check in. I'll log in, but I don't want to mess up my uh, my stream quality because I get such little bandwidth um, on my internet connection that I can't have it all open at once. So, but uh, I'll check in on you guys. And hopefully, you're doing well. But hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. This is my this is my first stream of the new year. No, surely not. Now I've done some fake streams. I've done real streams. I've I've done like recordings, and then I posted it up for the Patreon, but they weren't actual stream streams um because i've been uh, struggling with schedule stuff but i think i've got a plan now i'm going to be trying to stream at this time slot um as often as i can and um let me kind of i'll start off by kind of explaining where we're at with uh the series so let me go ahead and turn off stuff here's our little guy and here's our set so if you're not familiar um we've been going through uh, let me pull it up here uh, grab my channel real quick. I've, so I've, I've just finished doing a 12 episode series. Uh, just pull up my actual page. And where is it? I don't even have it featured. That's funny. I'm a bit disorganized, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, so anyways, here we go. So we've got this uh, series that we've been doing, um, not the, the robot. Uh, or the presence, but this other stuff here. I can explain procedural roles. We've been making this this robotic arm. We've been doing the uh, the storyboards and talking about how to how to write a story. So there's this uh, 12 episode playlist that I've got now that's been basically creating all the assets for this short film. And the short film is going to be called Dump Run, and it's about this uh, little robot who gets trapped in a dump uh, on this spaceship and has to escape. And it's a lot of fun. So we uh, we we finished the first part, right? So the first part is building everything. So we've got all the assets together. We've got everything assembled. And so those have formed all those tutorials. So I've been able to teach you guys kind of step-by-step step everything I've been going through and thinking about in building this entire short film from the ground up, starting all the way back with the story. So now we're kind of entering a new phase. So this is the part where I'm going to be creating this film. I'll be animating it. And I want to do it all in live streams. So I'm going to be animating this film entirely in live streams, putting it all together. And I'm not necessarily going to turn these into tutorials. So there's a chance I'll take like highlights. I haven't quite decided. There might be material I pull from this to make some concise tutorial material out of. But I'm thinking that going forward with this series, it's going to be about these live streams. And it's going to be about me animating this film live so you guys can watch it. And I'll just expound on everything that's going on as I, as I talk through it. So that's going to be the plan. So I hope you're excited about that. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, this one is going to be, um, I'm going to keep this one up, this stream up. So if you miss it or you can't catch all of it, I'll, I'll keep this up. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to play this going forward because it's a bit different, this setup. Um, I ran into the same problem with Epic Space Battles when I got to the live stream section. Where I was just making the film. Uh, so, But the other thing is I'm going to try and make these streams shorter. So these are going to be much shorter streams. I usually do about two hours in the stream. I'm going to try and stream for around 30, 45 minutes. Um, and the purpose of that is so I can kind of make it more sustainable for myself, but also I can do it more frequently. So I was doing just one stream a week. Um, and at the moment, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do all, even every other night would be amazing. If I can pull that off, I'll be really happy with that. So once I get into a rhythm uh, with my schedule and routine, we'll see how it works. And uh, But I'm hoping this will work. That way we can just kind of keep making progress on this one as opposed to the last one, which we didn't actually end up finishing. But anyways, um, just say a quick hi to everybody uh, in chat. Um, hello, thanks for coming. Good, stream quality is okay. Thanks, Rashid. Thanks for telling me. Hey, Spicy Carmel. Welcome, everybody. Um, Sadina says, don't delete the stream. I might, I won't delete this one. Um, well, I don't delete any of the streams, but usually what I do is I, after a live stream, I leave it up for a few days, and I take it down, I put it up for Patreon or uh, channel members, and then I edit it into a tutorial, you know, that's concise that all you guys get to watch. Because I won't be turning these into tutorials, that's why I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. So stay tuned. I'll let you know once I figure out a plan. Um, anyways, hope you all enjoy it. Um, I do have my keyboard key map enabled. You can see my mouse clicks there and my key presses. So hopefully I'll have that ready to go. Let me know if um, you guys have any feedback or questions. 
um, I'm going to try to stop and check out what you guys are saying and uh, what's going on. But yeah, we're going to go until, so let's see, it's 7.42. Um, I'm going to try going until when? Uh, 8, 8.15 maybe? Uh, so what is that? That'd be, uh, yeah, roughly a half hour, maybe maybe 8.30. I'll try and go till 8.30 for my time. So that'll be about 45 minutes. So buckle up. I've got everything set up. So here we are. Um, we've got the set. I've imported the set. If you missed um, the the previous tutorial, which I actually haven't published yet, you have to remember to publish it. <laughs> so you haven't. Everyone's missed it. But basically, I've brought in the the hallway that we've modeled, right? So here's our hallway. We made this in the earlier tutorial. You can watch that playlist is in the description. Um, but I've imported it, so I've gone in here. I've gone File, and I've gone Link, and I've selected this hallway collection. You can see right here from the hallway uh, file. There it is. L O C hallway. And uh, then what I've done is I've, with it selected, I've gone up and I've gone uh, file, let's see, where is it? Um, file, I forget where this lives. Where does it live? Oh, it's up here, object menu, that's right. Object relations, and then uh, make library override, um, which I'll go over all that in that tutorial, but basically that's the process you do to get something linked into your file. So if I need to make any changes to this hallway, I gotta go do it in the original source file, can't do it here, but this is here just so um, I've got I can have this in a bunch of different scene files. And if I need to make a change, I can make that change and it'll populate across everything. So same with my little robot guy, I've got him imported as well from the thing. Now, if you want all these project files, if you want to follow along and make this short film with me, you can get them right now on Patreon. So if you join on Patreon, you get all the project files for this short film that I'm going to be using. So you can follow along with me. Those will be available uh, this month is the last month because I made them available last in January. So you, whenever you join, you get this month and the previous month. So if you want all the project files, join now before February is over and you'll be able to download all these files, including the droid, this hallway, all this stuff. And then you can follow along and do the short film with me if that's something you'd like to try and do. So, all right, here we go. So I've got my little um, reference up here, this video. This is the, uh, the animatic. So this is the storyboards that we drew and I've exported those as a little video and I've got them up here in the sequencer. Uh, so I can reference that uh, and what we'll be doing here is just using this as a guide and we'll follow along and just try and map out these different shots. So I'm going to hit zero to jump into my camera and I'm going to go ahead and set up my first shot. So my first shot is got this, uh, this video where the, the basically they're marching, the guys are marching through and we have this close up and then we cut wide to reveal what's actually going on. So I want to get a good frame. Oops. I need to lock my camera to view. So come over here to view in the side tab and lock my camera to view. And I'm just going to get set up here with the camera. And I'm going to try and find a nice composition. Okay. Um, now, what I can do, it might be a good idea. Let's see. We could use, I'm going to use these controls to kind of fine tune where I want to go. One thing I could do, I might come back a bit further and take this camera tab and use my clip start and end. So I can use the clip start to bring this forward a bit and you can see it basically starts clipping everything and cutting things off. Sometimes this can work to give you a bit of a clear view uh, if you can, if you don't have one already. So I'll just pull that up my try two. Two seems to be pretty good. So this will allow me to pull back a little bit further than I would normally be able to. Kind of a nice shot. I think it really captures the idea of what this is supposed to be, which is really supposed to be like right down here, right on the ground, something like that. So let me, I'll pull the, I'll actually pull that back. So go back to point one and I'll take my camera and I'm going to rotate up a little bit and I'll come down to the floor. Uh, right. Zero that out and make that negative 90. So we're looking straight down that hallway section here. And let's check out our lens. What's our lens here? 24. That's a bit wide for this. So we should probably punch in a little bit. I might, I might go all the way to a 50 and see how that looks. That will compress the space a little bit, give us a different look. Um, that's pretty good. Now I'm not looking at this in rendered view at the moment. Um, by the way, I've just got material view set up. And if you click up on the little tab, you've got, um, usually it's, uh, you can, I've just turned off my scene world and scene lights and it's got one of the standard default HDRIs. This just helps to kind of create a general lighting for the scene, but this isn't the intended lighting for what it's going to be. We'll just do all animation and stuff first and then we'll figure out lighting. So, uh, 
Oh, thanks for letting me know, Isaac. Volume too low. I'm just, I'm probably just, I'm whispering so much because I'm so nervous that I'm going to wake the kids up. Let me turn up the mic. There we go. Testing, testing, testing. How's that? Does that sound a little bit better? Let me know if I, I don't want to peak. That's the main thing. So if it starts peaking or sounds bad, let me know. But is that better, Isaac? Give me, give me a shout out. Let me know if that's, that sounds better. All right. So I'm going to come down. This should be pretty good. It would be nice to center this up. That looks pretty centered. All right, cool. I'm going to work with this. All right, now I'm going to grab, I'm also going to make sure I untick. Actually, I'm going to right click here. So camera to view. This is where we, you know, lock to the camera and pull out of the camera. I'm going to right click on this. And okay, it's already in my quick favorites. I'll just remove it so I can show you this works. This is a great tool. If you right click on anything, you can go add to quick favorites. And what that does is that activates when you hit the Q, the Q for quick favorites is a little list. You can put anything in it, you know, like you could, you could, you know, put, put the, you know, exposition of something. Uh, okay. You can't put the exposition, but anyways, it, you can put a lot of things in it. Um, and, uh, it's really useful. So I'm going to make sure I'm unticked from lock camera to view. So I don't accidentally move my camera now that I've got a position that I like, and I'm going to grab my character here and I'm just going to grab him on the Y and we need to figure out, we need to go ahead and get an animation cycle going for this sort of march, right? So we're going to, we're going to create a march for this guy. So let's think about how do I want them to move? I might pop out of my camera and think about this. Let's see. Let's, let's switch over into pose mode and I'm going to bring my window up a little bit and I'm going to go for, I'm going to split this view and I'm going to grab my dope sheet. I'll switch to the action editor and I'm going to click new and I'm going to call this March or droid March. Okay. So this is going to be a new action and I look up here, I'm kind of drawn out how I think it would go. I mean, we could just, just technically really just need a, a walk cycle, which I think, do we already have one? No. I know I've got one from a previous tutorial, but just kind of rough this out. Uh, let's see. Probably need to do this as a walk cycle, so I shouldn't get too. I'll hide this camera because it's kind of annoying. Actually, I'll just come forward. That's fine. All right. Um, let's maybe raise the body, lower the body. So let's set a keyframe for these guys. I'm also going to turn on auto keying uh, right here. So auto keying basically means whenever you move something, it's automatically going to set a key. This can catch you out, so be careful if you ever turn that on. Um, but, all right, I'm going to set hit I to set a keyframe here. Um, what does that look? Why are there no rotation keyframes on that? Oh, because I have the object. That's not what I meant. I wanted to come to the bone. That's it. So you got to go to the bone tab. If you're in pose mode, so we're pose mode, you have to go to the bone tab to set your, oh, and we're on quaternion rotations. Ooh, I don't want that. I don't want that. Can I, can I change that in here? Or do I have to go to the base file? Um, oh, I can't change it. X, Y, Z, Euler. Perfect. I prefer that for rotations. Um, all right, cool. So let's, uh, let's keep going. I'm going to take this I'm gonna zero that out. I'll zero this out. So I've just got X rotation. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to hit I and I to set keyframes for those. And same here. I'm going to switch this to X, Y, Z, I and I. And do I want to go ahead and position this guy on the floor is probably a good idea. Let's pull that down there. That works, but I'm going to get rid of that keyframe. I don't think I want a keyframe on the master controller. All right, so then we'll go forward a little bit. 
and the foot's going to come down. Just zero all those out. And if you click and drag, you can get all of them highlighted, and you can just enter something. So put that foot right down on the ground. Now, technically, we don't need to like fully animate this yet, but I probably don't want to get too bogged down because it'd be good to kind of rough out the scene first. Uh, but eh, I don't know. We'll use this so much as probably is. So the foot comes down. I'm going to look at this as well. I'm just going to do step keyframes. So I'm going to go up edit preferences and I'm going to go to system. No. Uh, animation and default interpolation. I'm going to switch this to constant. And then I'll take hit A to select all, and then I'll grab these keyframes, right click, interpolation, constant. And that just means that it's going to be, there's no interp interpolation between the frames. This helps me just kind of think a bit clearer about uh, the position of everything. All right, so that comes down. And when that comes down, this one's gonna go up. Maybe something like that. This doesn't look right at all. I need to actually get a proper walk cycle. To reference. Otherwise, I'm going to be wasting my time. I'm just doing this from memory. Switch that to back there. Right. I think this one needs to be forward a little bit. If you watch my, I've got a tutorial on how to animate a walk cycle with this droid. I'd recommend watching that. I should watch that, to be honest. Okay, so this one, then I'll put back to its default position for this move. I'll flatten this one out and I'll put it down on the ground. I think I'm not quite on the ground with these. To be careful about that. Okay, that happens. So what happened when the other one hit? That one pulls up. So this one hits. And I should probably do the same thing where I bring it back. And this one. Yeah, something like that. Uh, missing the flap. So that, see how the heel's touching the ground there? And then it goes thunk. So I need to have one where the heel touches. So we've got that. Move this out a little bit. And we've got, then we need one where the heel touches. This goes back. So maybe this one doesn't go fully back. More than. Like I saw a double double move there. Oh, it's just so similar to that move. Got it. So that one should be. Forward, so let's take this one back. Ah, oh, that quinturnian. That's really going to mess me up. I should fix this. I should really fix this now. All right, well, this is a good learning opportunity. So this is going to mess me up because it's quinturnian for every single bone. And that's a type of rotation that I don't really like it because I don't really understand it. <laughs> I'm sure it's great if you know what you're doing. Um, anyways, so what I want to do here, I'm going to go ahead and save. Save this one as 
So I'll put a oh, 01 at the end of this. And then I'm going to go open my droid. So characters, droid, droid. Okay, now what I can do is I can grab the rig, go into pose mode. And with all of these selected, I can come over here, right here to the rotations for the items. So I've got every bone selected. If I hold down the Alt key and I click here and I do that, it's going to change it for all of them. So now if I go to rotation, you'll see every bone now has uh, the kind, there it is, XYZ ruler, Euler. So it's the right kind of rotation, the rotation that I, I want, that I find I'm most comfortable with. So now I've changed that in the master file. So I save, right? And now I go back to this one. And now if I go into pose mode, you'll see that all of them should be correct. Yep. So that, that's going to help out a lot. All right. Uh, let's see. Say hi to you guys. Um, oh, Sam Lacey. That's so cool. Um, saying that you've been watching since I did the post-apocalyptic uh, short film. Uh, oh no, you've been working on your own. That's really cool. You're working on your own apocalyptic short film. Nice. Keep going. Only 16, but learn more. Uh, that's really cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, 3D uh, Leader Studio says, I think it's better to do pose library and then animate. Yeah, pose library is probably a good idea. Um, but I mean, it's kind of what we're doing. We're just creating some poses. We're not going to fully animate this guy. And yeah, spicy caramel robot feels like it should rotate side to side. That'd be fun. It's a good idea. We'll come up with a nice walk for it. Um, we don't need to get too detailed yet. Um, you'll see we'll be able to evolve this as we go. All right, let's just get this right. So we come forward and we come down and then snap. So how did I do it here? Grab this foot. If I need this, I feel like I've got too many keyframes. Maybe it's just the timing of them. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, I gotta turn screencast keys back on. It always deactivates whenever you uh, close your file. Yeah, so it work. All right, let's tighten this all up. Save 4978. Let's just have a quick look. If I hit P, I can preview. I can drag a little box and it'll let me preview just this section. It'll loop for me. So we need to get back to that. So if we go down, Alt P clears it, by the way. And then. Forward a little bit. This one goes back. This one comes forward. Rotates. If we just go straight to that. And do the, the flap down. That's right. That should be the same as our. Yep. Let's grab this and let's just duplicate that there. So if we go Alt P or just normal P, right? Box everything except for the frame before that one. Let me try that again. Make sure. All right, cool. We've got some inconsistencies here we need to clean up. So we'll take this, make sure we go up the step and then forward and then down. This one, I feel like he really should come right down like that, you know?
So this one too, I think. Should come down. A little bit there. Might be a little too much, but that's all right. And let's get this right. Looks a bit funny. Do I have that right? You can see how it's coming together. You know, just working in those step keyframes makes it a bit simpler. It's a bit easier to manage. It's not perfect, but it's also not bad. All right. Cool. I think that works. Uh, let's see what it looks like when we spline it. So I'm going to right click, go switch to Bezier. This will help me pick out the problems. Right here, we've got like everything's sort of dead still. Might get rid of that keyframe, grab all this stuff, bring it back. Yeah, that looks better. Change our preview range again. It's nice. We'll work on it more later. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to constant so that it's kind of just this, you know, it's not too specific yet. And what I'm going to do is, so I've just put this into an action editors where I've, I built this, right? Which really, if I switch over to the dope sheet, you can see it's here as well, right? Every time you create something, no matter what you do, it automatically creates keyframes and you can view those in the dope sheet. But what it's also doing is if you go to the action editor, it's automatically naming that action as something. Now, sometimes you may never open the action editor. And so you animate your thing for the entire scene. And, you know, it's going to have a name here, but it's like the animation from your entire scene. Um, if you want to get really specific and reuse bits of animation, you can name those things here. And then what you can do is once you've named them, you can push them down and that will turn them into a strip in the NLA editor. If you want to watch more about that, you can check out. There's a video on my site about um, working with the NLA editor. I think it's called how to animate like a pro or a ninja or something like that. So let's um let's go. We're gonna take all this stuff here. I'm just gonna bring this back to the first frame. Now, yeah, I can see you guys saying it looks a bit weird. It totally does. You're right. This is not finished animation. But the point of this phase of what we're in with this film is not to have polished finished animation. We're just kind of getting the ideas in place. Think about it like like rough brush strokes. Okay. And we'll be able to build this stuff out with much more fine detail as we as we go. All right, so um, so I've got this here. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to pull up my uh, NLA editor. So I'm going to come up a little bit, and I'll split this view again. And I'm going to bring up the, where is it, NLA. There it is. And I've got a bunch of tracks already, which is kind of weird. <laughs> Can I delete them? X. No, why is it not deleting? Um, edit. Delete tracks. Who knows? Oh, it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to click push down. That will put a strip here called Droid March. And then what I can do is I can come over here and I can take that strip and I can say, all right, uh, extrapolation. I want to come down to action clip down here at the bottom. And I can say I want to repeat this. And I can say how many times I want to repeat it. So I just put 50, something crazy. And now he's just going to march indefinitely for a long time. But I don't need to march forever. I just need him to kind of march through. These guys are going to march forever. So I might just keep them going. But at this point, I think they're going to be gone. So let's let's just bring this repeat down so that it's right about there. Cool. 
All right, I can get rid of this. Just drag up there, drag down there, and drag down here. Jump back into my camera. All right, now what I can do is I can take this. Now, one of the things that we didn't do is we didn't set any keyframes for the master controller, right? So this means I can still kind of animate this on its own. And as I was saying before, like if I come up here and I go back to my dope sheet, um, go to my action editor. I've got nothing now, right? Because I pushed that down. It's now in the NLA editor. If I want to go back, I can edit it, right? So I can go to the NLA editor uh, and I can find that strip. So we can come here to droid rig material. Oh, here it is droid rig. I can grab this and I can hit tab to go into edit mode, right? And it's the same thing, right? So here now suddenly I've got keyframes visible. If I switch over to my dope sheet again, um, you can see those are the keyframes there that I've just revealed by using tab. So go back to that and tab that dope sheet is now empty. So we haven't deleted anything. It's not gone. It's just sort of organized in a different way. But now what I can do is I can do other things like this. I can grab my um, I could either I could animate the master controller or I could just animate the rig. I think I'll animate the rig. I kind of like that better sometimes because then it gives me like an extra layer of control if I need it. Yeah. I'll do it that way. So I'm going to take this guy and I'll start off in the first frame. Let me get rid of that dope sheet. And I'm going to move him off frame like this. And I don't want any shadows or anything like that. So I might move him to 4.3. And then I'm going to right click insert single keyframe. This will go yellow. So I've inserted a keyframe just for that moment there. And then I'll come forward to referencing up here on my my little frame up here. Uh, we go until that point. So that's when they disappear. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to move him forward. There we go. Forward. Let me pop out of my camera. So he's got to make it all the way down the tunnel. Or actually, do I want him going that way or do I want him going? That doesn't matter. Uh, actually, it does a little bit. Which one's further? Well, it's not quite as far. Oh yeah, I need to be facing. It's facing that way. I think I need him going the other way because if I look in my camera, am I? Um, let me think about this. I want to be looking at the slot where the light is, which is this one here. You know what? It doesn't matter. They can go far and I'll just, I can always do a, a jump cut. So let me just, I'll move him into position. So way off over here, I've got a feeling he's going to be going way too fast for this. Um, now I want this to be a linear keyframe. So I'm going to right click and go interpolation linear. And that's because I don't want him to speed up and slow down. I want him to be constantly moving at a set rate. So let me go back here. Let's see. Yeah, that's way too fast. Well, not way too fast, but it's just a bit too fast. I'll just drag this keyframe out until that speed feels right. I think that's pretty good. Let's look at it from the camera's view. It's a bit too fast still. Oh, thanks so much for the super chat. Andre, really appreciate that. Andre says, thanks for all you do for the Blender community. My absolute pleasure. I love doing this. So thanks for thanking me. It's really nice to have you guys here with us tonight. Having some fun. Sorry for everybody on Twitch. Again, I know you guys are there. I just can't see what you're saying. So hopefully, hopefully Twitch isn't just like, you know, a mess of horror spam. slower.
I might need to speed up his walk cycle to be honest. This this might be a bit too slow. Yeah, that's definitely pretty slow. Let's speed up that walk cycle a little bit. I'm gonna come over to the NLA editor, grab this guy, and we could either speed it up here, or we could, I think I'll bring the keyframes in. So I'll also bring in my dope sheet. Just minimize all this stuff so I can just grab the summary here. And I'm gonna scale these guys. Uh, also need my timeline. Back to the first frame. I'm going to scale these guys in like that. And that's going to speed up that walk cycle a whole lot. So let's come back over here. And this is the object transform. Yep. Let's go ahead and grab this and bring it back. A little too fast. I'm kind of just looking at how his feet slide right across the ground because there's always gonna be this slide until you really perfect the animation um, but there is a point at which kind of this motion of this foot traveling back matches up with the speed that you're traveling forward and the foot looks like it sits still um, it's going to be kind of an illusion at this point because like it's never fully gonna it's never fully gonna look right uh because it's step keyframes I feel like maybe it could be going faster. Yeah, I think this could work. This feels like the right speed. Okay, cool. I think it's pretty good for now. Um, we'll, we'll know more once we've got this animation kind of, you know, smoothed out. Now let's think. What's going to be the best way for? Should I just? I wonder if I could just instance this stuff. Can I do that? I don't think I could do that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pop out of the camera. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy um, and do, I'm going to right click on it, select hierarchy. Actually, if I just click on this and hit shift D, that's going to do it as well. Yep. Can I drag him back in there? Uh, no, I can't. If I duplicate, should I do, what if I just duplicate the collection? Does that work? Uh, duplicate collection. Yeah, cool. All right, so I've got two versions of the same droid. And I could select this one here. And I can get rid of this. I don't need all that for now. I don't need the dev sheet either. What we can do is, what's the easiest way for me to do Just grab this action, right? These keyframes and pull them back. Uh, let me take as well, this is getting annoying. So I'm gonna take my hallway. I might just turn it off. I don't need the lights. Yeah, there we go. Just turn that off for now. Uh, also need to hide that. Okay. So there we go. 
get the right position there. I'm going to click duplicate collection, open collection up, turn off the utilities, grab the rig, and grab these guys. Oh, I see that's not going to work very well for me, is it? All right, let me. might grab all these keyframes and just move them so they're in the middle. And then I'll focus in on them. So I can get the spacing all correct. Yep. Now how many of these do we need? Sorry. I've got one, two, three, six. And the sixth is our hero. So one, two, three, four, five other droids. Duplicate the collection. Hide the utilities, grab this, put it back. You can see I'm doing it, I'm just changing the timing of the keyframe that translates them, right? So they all kind of are walking at the same rate. We'll change their, their walk patterns as well so they're not so in sync. Although maybe maybe droids would be in sync. Let's duplicate this duplicate collection, drop it out, like that, this, one, two, three, four, five, great. And then we just need our hero, um, which, I mean, yeah, might as well use him. I click duplicate. That looks good. Now what we could do is uh, go to the NLA. Bring this up a bit. I wish I could get rid of all these extra tracks. I don't know why they're... Move to empty. Edit. Tracks. Maybe they've come in from, maybe I had some tracks on him in the linked file. Who knows? Uh, so anyway, what we could do here, and I'm going to grab each of these, and we could just kind of offset them a little bit, so I can just hit G to grab, and then do this. I'm just offsetting a few frames. Kind of random, right? So now they're all landing at different points. Which doesn't quite feel like a march now, does it? Yeah, I think they all need to be in sync. That actually makes more sense. Story. I mean, maybe just like a little bit out of sync. That look like I'll decide once I've got them fully in motion. All right, let's swap back over to grab all this. Now, this puts them in the wrong spot, right? So naturally, I want them, you know, way back where the camera is. But I also know that I need to kind of like jump forward because I need them at the end of the hallway at a certain point. So I don't need to have like a linear amount of time like that they're just going to walk at the set pace and get to the, you know, get to the end of the hallway naturally. I'm going to have to jump time somehow. So I need something that I can use to kind of reposition these guys once I'm happy with their general position. So I'm with all of them selected. I'm going to go shift A and empty plane axis empty. And why is it? Oh, sorry. Uh, with all these guys selected, uh, that's right, Shift S, we're going to go Cursor 2 selected, that'll put it there, and then what I can do is go Shift A, Empty, and Access Empty. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Get rid of that guy. So now what I can do is I select all these dudes, right? And then I can Shift Select the the, the Empty, and I'm going to make sure it's it's that brighter orange. Yeah, they're like they're kind of a red orange, and this is like a bright orange, like a yellowish orange. 
that means this is the active object, which is the last one that I've selected. When you parent, it's everything you parented goes underneath the last object that you selected. So I can take this empty and then control P and I'm gonna go object, uh, keep transform. I don't think it'll matter, but I'm just gonna do that anyways. So now everything's gone over to it. Now that's not what we wanted because it actually assigned, that apparented all the geometry, which is not what I want. I actually just want to grab the rigs. That's correct. Because otherwise they would all go nuts. Because like the mesh would move off the bones and things would go crazy. Let's try that again. That looks better. All right, I'm going to call this um, Droid Master uh, Controller. Just abbreviate controller. And now I can move this wherever I want. So I can move this back here to the camera so that they're gonna march right in front of the camera. And then after they pass the camera, I can then like jump them forward in time if I need. So let's get back in here. Also got a rogue uh, util turned on. There we go. Let's turn our location back on. There we go. Great. Now the idea of the shot is we want to start with nobody in frame. So I'm going to grab my Droid Master Controller. And I'll just move it so they are off camera. Also going to make sure to set keyframes for that guy because I don't want him moving. That's what I meant by auto key can really mess you up. So I'm going to turn auto key off for a minute. And let's have a look. It's pretty good. So now there's a point right here where I cut wide to a new camera. So I'm going to start using uh, timeline editing in this short film. And timeline editing is a really cool technique where you actually in Blender can kind of make a live edit of your scene, but it's using cameras and markers. So we're going to, we're going to create a marker for this camera. So I'm going to get control M. No, uh, what is it? Control marker. Find camera, get control B. That's it. Okay, so control B. You can see on the timeline, you can see that, right? Yep, down here, we've got this, the name of that camera is right here. Um, and I should name this. Uh, so I've called this S SC01 for scene one. And then uh, it's just like a number value for the camera. This doesn't really matter. Call it whatever you want, uh, version one. And then this is for description. So this is going to be our uh, low angle feet. Enter. That's good. Just some, something you can like clearly see um, I'm all over the place there with my spacing. Look at that. I've got underscores. I've got <laughs> low angle feet in there. That works. All right. So let's uh, let's take this and let's find that frame where we switch. Yep. Right here. So I'm going to click this camera. And I'm going to Shift D to duplicate. So I've got a new camera, and I'll call this one. Uh, marching wide profile. Um, I'll call this camera zero two, and it's labeled like that just so like they when when I sort by name, they're in the correct order of what they happen. But also I'm skipping by a hundred so that if I want to make new cameras, I can stick them in between there and they'll fit nicely. If that makes sense. All right, so right here, we're going to control B. So we're, we're going to bind to this new camera and make sure that my camera is locked to view. So now I'm going to frame up for this new camera. So this one, I'm going to kind of come out like this. And I'm going to use that same technique where we use the clip. So I clip my scene. Um, and I think I want to go pretty wide with this, but I want to fill the frame with the whole way. So I don't want to go too wide. Like this is too wide right here, right? Because we get top and bottom frame. It's going to be a bit of a juggling act to get this right. That should be pretty good. Let's get got some weird rotations here. So negative 90, just 90. I want this to be like a just a straight up profile shot. I might lift my camera up a little bit on the Z value. Um, actually, let's just see. Is there a clip playing? Can it come back? I want to get rid of those wall things. Let's 
That's about as far as I can go from this angle. That's pretty good. Sometimes I also turn off the controllers just so I can get a sense of what the shot's looking like. Now I want to be centered up on this red light. So let's let's take this and center this up. I also want to go ahead and activate, if I go over here, I can turn on composition guides and I can turn on the center to my back up. Different things like the center, thirds, right, ratio. You, I don't know if you can see them. They're really faint dotted lines, but it just helps with composition because you can actually work out, you know, like where the center of your frame is, for example. So it's a very helpful tool for lining things up. So now I can go like this, and I know now it's centered up right around this hatch, which is just what I want. Now, I think when I cut, I'm going to kind of jump time a little bit. So I've got this here. I'm going to, at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, Droid Master Controller, and I'm going to set a keyframe for the Y position. I'll just set a keyframe for everything, actually. And then I'm going to come forward one frame, and now I'm going to reposition these guys. It's not on the X. Forward. And just pick where I want them to go. Because remember, we're going to have to get to this point where this guy is going to sneak off. That should be good. Oh, that's right, I don't have auto key turn on. Rookie error. Insert single keyframe. Now it's just going to jump. Like right click and go constant. I'm pretty sure it won't trigger motion blur. Could be. This is also kind of why I meant with the animation, you know, not to rush ahead and animate this, this, this walk cycle to be perfect and get all the timing right, the foot and stuff. Because one thing you might notice as we move forward with this, you will notice it, it's definitely going to happen to me a bunch, is as I begin to flesh out storyboards, storyboards work kind of on their own, right? They're just sort of their own thing. When you try and translate storyboard into a 3D space, though, a couple things happen. One, you, you come up with new ideas, you see stuff that would work a bit better. But also, too, sometimes the ideas don't work. They work really well when you draw them and it's all just flat 2D, but when it's in a 3D space, sometimes they don't work. So it's important not to refine too much with your animation until you really get your cameras figured out. And that's really what this phase is about. It's about getting the cameras figured out. So I could tell already that I don't really like this shot. Like, it doesn't quite feel right. These guys feel too big to me in this frame compared to how they feel here. Like the mood of this shot compared to this one is very different. And I'm not sure this is actually gonna work for us. So I'm already thinking in my head, oh, maybe I wanna do something different here. Um, but for now we'll stick with it because this is what our storyboard say. We're just gonna map it out. But that's why it's important not to go too far down the rabbit hole trying to perfect one little thing until you get the whole thing working. I also feel like they're going way too slow. It might be as well if we're looking at this in rendered view. Yeah, that's heaps better. All right, so let's see what our next shot is. So these guys are going to go, and this guy's got a lag behind. Okay, so it's probably going to be better for us if this dude is not in the group. Okay, so I'm going to position him right about there where I want him to stop, and I'm going to hit Alt-P, clear parent, keep transformation. Nope. <laughs> Alt-P, clear parent. Nope. Alt-P. Nope. Why is, he, why is he disappearing every time? Should be Alt-P. Clear and keep transform, but it's not. Where does he go? Let's uh, let's see. Can I? Yeah, girl, I can't get it in line there. So just line him up. There'll be a point where he kind of stops. It's right about here, I think, in my boards. So I might have him stop here. So let's set a keyframe for his Y position. And I'm just going to delete that keyframe so he stops moving forward. And then, as well, what we're going to do is go over to that NLA editor and make sure that his walk cycle here stops. 
here it is. It would help if we labeled him. Uh, yeah, because I even had the wrong one there. That's the correct. Droid 5, is that right? Yep, Droid 5. All right, let's go to strip and action strip and repeat. I'm just going to drag this so that it stops right in here. Probably do a fade out. Just kind of fade out. See how that works? It kind of this this out and in, blend out and in, it sort of blends out a strip or blends it in. It's really good. All right. How's everybody doing? You guys doing all right? Let's, let's just let's just real quick. Uh, let's just let's just see see what's happening on Twitch. Uh oh hey guys Emerga and Elixir9 It's very lonely. Oh Nilky. There's a few people. There's only one left. Well I appreciate you, Twitch. Really I do. Send a message. Sorry. I didn't see chat. <laughs> oh Emerga, nice. Thanks, mate. Legend. And I've closed Twitch again, so now I've got no idea what you're saying. Okay, back to this. So, hope this is all making sense. And there we go. So it comes to a stop as we can carry on the animation. So, um, just to kind of closing, wrapping up tonight, um, the, the big ideas are when you're approaching a scene, so it's really helpful having your storyboards like edited or ready to go and you know the timing's right and you're happy with it. Don't get bogged down in details. So don't get too far down the rabbit hole. Make sure your cameras are working. Make sure your shots are working in 3D. And make sure there's not any better ways of presenting your ideas. So kind of what we'll be doing next on uh, the next live stream is we'll carry on with this animation. We were not going to animate like every fluid moment of this character yet. I'm still going to be working. You'll notice uh, in the next stream. I'll be I'll be blocking his animations, blocking his poses, doing these sort of key poses and getting him into the right spot at the right time, and then playing with those big brush strokes. So in the end, what we'll have is this whole opening scene in a way that's uh, kind of this like choppy, chunky animation style, but the cameras will be worked out and the compositions will be worked out and it'll be really clear where things are going. And then what we can do is go through again from the start and really get the animation to work right um, and then what we'll do is after we've got our animation working right, we come back and just do a refinement pass on our cameras. There might be some things we need to tweak. Some of the things, you know, animation will kind of introduce some new ideas that might go, actually, it's a bit better if it's like this or like that. So um, flexibility is key, but kind of knowing how to approach each moment in your film is really, really important. And the, probably the biggest takeaway is just don't get lost in the details. Stay big picture in this early phase. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed tonight's stream. Uh, stay tuned. I'll be back again. I'm doing these as shorter, punchier streams so that I can sustain <laughs> and do this more frequently through the week. Um, so hopefully this time zone is good for you. If it's not, I'm going to leave these up, um, these streams up for a little bit longer than usual. So if you enjoy those, make sure you catch them all and check out the playlist as well in the description, which has all the tutorials where we build all this stuff. And again, don't forget, check out Patreon. If you jump over there, go to patreon.com slash cbaileyfilm. If you become a member at the second tier and up this month, February 2022, you'll be able to get all the project files from this short film so that you can make it to follow along with me in these live streams. So if you don't get it this month, you're going to miss out. And um, next opportunity will be when I put this together as a, um, a, a pack that I will, I'm going to sell as um, a course with everything all together. So you can keep an eye out for that if you miss the February 2022 deadline. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all of you. Thanks for tuning in and spending time with me. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic day. See ya.